I didn't have no motivation to do it. Zero motivation to do anything. Zero motivation to have a shave, zero to brush your teeth, even have a shower, nothing. I can't tell you in words how I felt, how down I was. When you lose control of your own mind, you're in a bad place. I just wanted to show the world that if mental health could bring somebody as big as me and as strong as me and, you know, the stereotype heavyweight champion of the world to my knees, then it could bring anybody to the knees. And I thought to myself, if I can show the world that you can come back from it and to get back in shape and get back to the top, then anybody can do it. I knew something was wrong with me my whole life. Growing up as a child, I, I'd feel a, a, a loneliness even when I was with other people. I wasn't a confident character what you see today. I was a very shy, reserved, skinny little whippet kid. I was always told that I couldn't do stuff and, and I'd never do anything, I'd never achieve anything. So that made me worse, basically. I've experienced the highest highs and the lowest lows in life. Something I'd worked for my whole life and when I finally achieved it, it was like, oh well, that was a lot of rubbish. I wasn't expecting now to feel like this. Like I said to you before, I just felt like a, an emptiness, a deep gaping hole of nothing. Darkness and grey clouds. Every day was grey. I, I felt like I had nothing to look forward to. I was worthless. It was just a horrible, horrible feeling that people need to understand that many, many people are in the same boat. They don't have to be very successful sports athletes to feel like this. Anybody from day to day has the same feelings. What does it all mean? What does being a world champion really mean? But what I was trying to say was, what does it all really mean when I'm not well on the inside? I was in a position of power. I had glory, fame, achievements, money, a family, all earthly assets that one could want. But it meant nothing. So they couldn't understand why would this man feel like this. The repetitive thinking, the same stuff day in, day out, and it won't go away. And the more I'm trying to think, right, I want to be positive, negative, 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 negative. And everyone I was around was getting negative too because I was putting it on them. And this went on for 18 months, well, on me battling my own self every day, drinking, abusing my body, eating rubbish, taking drugs. Everything I stood for didn't matter anymore. I'd never ever experienced anything in my whole life, even though I'd had anxiety before. This was the king daddy of all anxiety attacks. This was, I was so sure I was going to die, but nothing mattered. I didn't care. All I wanted was, was atonement for my sins. I can't tell you in words how I felt, how down I was. When you lose control of your own mind, you're in a bad place. And it's a silent killer. It's almost like carbon monoxide, poison. You can't smell it, you can't taste it, you can't feel it. But you can. The way I explain mental health is you bottle up and bottle up and bottle up and then it just explodes. You can't, you can't bottle anymore. And that's, that's when you're having your, your bad times. And I was drinking every day, something I'd never done in my life. To try and wash me uh, sorrows away. But it didn't it come to a stage where, I, oh, well, that's one way of doing it, but I'm going heavier and heavier. I was gaining 380, 390, 400 pounds, and I was very unhealthy. I didn't fit in anything I owned anymore. It wasn't me anymore. I had, I had two bodies. The turning point was, I went out Halloween, dressed as a uh, skeleton in a fancy dress party. I went out about nine o'clock, and I expected to stay out all night and get smashed. I had one drink. I looked around me and I thought, what am I doing? I'm, I'm back normal again now, yeah? I'm back, like, thinking straight. Still drinking, but thinking sensible again. And I called out to my wife, I said, Paris, here. She said, what? I said, tomorrow. I said, I start to turn my life around. I said, I promise you. I said, I'm going to do it. I'm definitely going to do it. From that day, I got my tracksuit on in the morning and I was going to run two miles. I got about 200 yards and stopped. And I thought, right, I can't, I can't run. 
I've run all my life, I've always been a very good runner. And I got 200 yards and I was totally gone. I could feel my belly moving on them. It wasn't like a fat like jelly, it was like solid brick. It was a, it was a horrible feeling. I thought, okay, I'm gonna walk the rest, and I walked. And, and every day I'd go out on the canal and I'd do a little run in my sweatsuit. And every day I'd get a little bit further until I was doing four or five mile again. And then I'd come back and I worked my way back and we worked repetitively, day in, day out, day in, day out. And at that time I was still sleeping with the light on. I couldn't sleep in the dark. You need to stimulate the mind. And I think training is a perfect way to do it. Working out, exercising. Whether you can do a lot or a little, you must do something. I give myself short-term goals and long-term goals. And I plan things more now. Where if, if I'm just not got anything on the horizon, I, I tend to wander and my mind goes, hey, well. But when I've got something on plan and I've got things going and I want to do this, this and this, even if it's, you don't, it doesn't have to be big things. It can be small, tiny goals that mean something to you as a person, as an individual. I'm very, very sure that working out and having a routine in your life is, is, is the answer for mental health problems. I want you to know that every day for two years was very grey and dark for me. But it will come back great again. You will have sunshine days again. Rose-coloured days warm by the sun.